As a result of an agreement reached between the United States and Russia on September 14th, Syria has agreed to destroy its stockpile of chemical weapons under international supervision. These weapons have been used on several occasions during the current civil war in Syria, most recently on August 21st, with the loss of hundreds of civilian lives. There are three things to know about disarming Syria of its chemical weapons. The first is that this will be an immensely difficult process to complete by the middle of 2014, as the agreement stipulates. Syria has reportedly over a thousand metric tons of various types of chemical agents that are dispersed in many different places around the country. Ensuring the safe removal and disposal of the related materials and equipment is a hugely complex task, even assuming full cooperation from Syrian authorities. Doing so, moreover, in a way that is fully verifiable so that the United States and other concerned powers are satisfied that no chemical weapons have been secreted away for potential use in the future will also be very hard to accomplish given the many places they can be hidden and current levels of mistrust with the Syrian regime. How the agreement will be enforced and what measures will be enacted if the Syrian regime fails to live up to its obligations is also likely to be a highly contentious issue. The second thing to know about the disarmament of Syria's chemical weapons is that it will take place amidst an ongoing civil war. No ma major disarmament process has ever been attempted in wartime. The agreement could easily unravel for, for a variety of reasons having to do with the interests of the different parties to the conflict. For example, if rebel forces make significant advances on the battlefield, the Assad regime may feel compelled to once again use chemical weapons. Some elements of the regime may be resentful of losing these weapons and decide to obstruct the disarmament process and even use chemical weapons again to scuttle the deal. Rebel forces and other armed groups inside Syria may also gain control of these weapons and decide to use them for a variety of reasons. And then there is always the possibility of further mass atrocities occurring that have nothing to do with chemical weapons, but which will increase the pressure for military intervention in Syria. The third thing to know is that the chemical weapons agreement, however desirable, will not end the civil war that has cost over a thousand lives to date. Only victory by one side or a comprehensive political settlement will do this. Although there is some hope that the United States and Russia can build on their recent cooperation to fashion a diplomatic solution, their differences remain fundamental. No one should believe, therefore, that this is a war that will end any time soon.